Just off Bermuda's famous beaches, there lies a world of spectacular, untamed beauty. A feral place of mystery and violent death. A place where the powerful forces of nature are kept in harmony by a delicate balance. Yet that balance is facing an unprecedented threat. An invasion caused entirely by human carelessness. They're spawning very rapidly. They're eating very aggressively. Ecological destruction sparked by human blundering is hardly new, but rarely have we blundered on such a scale as this. The geographic spread is amazing. And really in a decade, this fish has completely invaded Southeast US, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico. Our blunder is called the lionfish. Humans have really messed up with the lionfish. If you asked for a poster child for invasive species, you couldn't have asked for a better one. The impact of lionfish is so dramatic that the United Kingdom government has warned that lionfish could trigger the collapse of fisheries in the Caribbean region. So there's a couple of different problems we have um, with lionfish in the Atlantic. First of all, they're not supposed to be here. They're considered an invasive species, which is a species that's moved into an ecosystem and it outcompetes the native species. Unwittingly, humans introduced lionfish to the Atlantic sometime in the 1980s. We're very confident that this invasion started through home aquarium owners or the aquarium trade introducing lionfish by releasing their pets. Pet owners who release their pets into the wild have caused spectacular damage all over the world. But lionfish may be the worst catastrophe they have caused so far. We know that their extreme impacts to biodiversity um, represents one of the greatest changes that we've seen to the reef fish community probably since the beginning of industrial, industrialized fishing and even overfishing of some of these reef systems. Even tiny Bermuda has not escaped the Blitzkrieg. Bermuda's reefs earn the island about 700 million a year, supporting about 12 percent of our economy. Lionfish may change all of that. Chris Fluck spent 15 years collecting reef fish for the Bermuda Aquarium Museum and Zoo. He is no stranger to the dramatic effects a few lionfish can have on a reef. When you start talking about 80 to 90 percent of the fish that are supposed to be there aren't because lionfish are on these reefs consuming, that's very scary. Fluck says when lionfish move onto a reef, the juvenile fish simply disappear. The big fish will then leave because there's no small fish to eat because the lionfish have eaten them. But Bermuda's lionfish problem goes far deeper than that. Well over 200 feet deeper, as a matter of fact. The idea of today's dive is to go down to a known dive site that we call Tiger Reef. We discovered Tiger Reef about four years ago, and this was the spot where we first discovered that lionfish were at 200 feet in large numbers. This is the first evidence that we had the lionfish were here in large, large numbers here in Bermuda. We've dove this spot before and found lots and lots of lionfish in this one particular spot. We would classify this, this is how we first coined the phrase lionfish hotspot. This was the spot that we suddenly discovered that they were in large numbers at depth here. Graham Maddox and his dive team from Triangle Diving are part of the Ocean Support Foundation. They were the first people to actually see the magnitude of the danger to and Bermuda's our reefs. Uh, gases to our 30 percent nitrox at 130 feet and then ride the schedule on up. With extensive professional training, oh. Maddox and his team can dive far deeper than would ever be safe for recreational divers. Anytime you pass recreational limits, we are in a high-risk situation. We are very all highly trained, but some of the problems that can occur is decompression sickness. Also, with uh, closed-circuit rebreathers, we, there are a number of things that can happen. Hypoxia, uh, CO2 breakthrough in the canisters. Um, Open-circuit divers, of course, they're running out of air by the moment they start. Diver diving. Diver overboard. It's risky. But what really frightens Ocean Support Foundation team member Warren de Klerk is what he sees when he is down there. 
it's scary. It's really scary because I dive a lot in the shallows and I, I don't see them that much, but I've, I've been shocked diving deep and seeing so many of them, especially on, on one spot. Down the side of the volcano, in the darkness of the depths, there are thousands and thousands of lionfish. There was loads and loads of lionfish. The Ocean Support Foundation divers are building a database on the threat. They are also killing as many as possible. Tons and tons of lionfish, more than we could, more than we could get in half an hour. The speared lionfish are then placed in a canister that is returned to the surface, where safety divers and a support team are waiting. The catch is bountiful. It is a very good lionfish hole. As you saw, there is about 15 to 20 lionfish, which is an extremely good catch for us. But then, up comes another canister, doubling the size of the catch. There are many more lionfish to be had, but at such tremendous depth, the dive team is running out of time. Even with all their technical gear, they must soon begin a long, slow ascent to the surface. We are highly trained and we do practice a lot and um, we have many contingency plans. Everything we work on are the thirds rule, so we always carry three times more the amount of air that we need to make sure that we're all coming home to our families today. Back on the boat, the debriefing is not good. We uh, landed at 197 feet as planned and uh, landed right on Tiger Reef and there were copious amounts of lionfish down there. I then left the Tiger Reef and went for a little bit deeper water and followed it off to the edge, went down to 255, and there were lionfish all the way down at 255. I found lionfish all around the island. We had one that was in probably about three inches of water that when I walked up next to it, the spines came out of the water. That was in Ely's Harbor. And then just last weekend, my brother caught one in 60 fathoms off the southeast, hook and lining. There was one report that we had from uh, Puerto Rico that they brought one of these lionfish out of about 1,000 feet. I mean, that's deep. You don't get many fish that will have that range of depth as far as, you know, populating those depths. I mean, most fish are sort of either here, here, or here. But um, to have lionfish spread out that sort of far is, is very scary. And wherever lionfish go, they hunt mercilessly. Recent studies are showing the impacts of lionfish to their consumption of native species could be quite dramatic. In some cases in the Bahamas, reducing the native prey communities by an average of 65% in just a few years, affecting the recruitment of new juvenile species, eating a wide range of fish, including commercially important and ecologically important species. So we don't know what the effects are gonna be yet, but the evidence is pointing towards a very dramatic impact. The Ocean Support Foundation divers have proved that the enemy is not just coming, he is already here. Yet their alarm may have been sounded too late to stop this seemingly invincible army. Some people think of lionfish as maybe a super fish or the perfect invader, and it does have many qualities that are allowing it to be successful here. So why is the lionfish so successful in the Atlantic, but not in its home range of the Indo-Pacific Oceans? It's not an issue like this in the native range because it's evolved with controlling mechanisms. And part of the problem with invasive species in general or that when they're introduced into a new area, they leave behind all those controlling mechanisms. So lionfish have very few parasites here. The, the prey don't recognize them as a predator. And many different factors, competition with other species, etc., aren't present here, though they may control lionfish in the native range. And that's, that's what's allowing them to be so successful. They don't have any, you know, superfish qualities it's just that they don't have the controlling mechanisms here. Without controlling mechanisms, lionfish swiftly become a very serious problem. This is because they have a number of unusual characteristics. First, lionfish have surprisingly large mouths that allow them to swallow prey 
almost as big as they are. Basically, lionfish will eat just about anything they can fit down their mouth. They're really, really aggressive feeders. One of the problems with lionfish is they tend to eat lots of our little baby juvenile fish and they don't have a stop mechanism, so they gorge themselves to death on our baby juveniles. Corey Eddy, a marine biologist in Bermuda, helps clean the deep diver's haul. What he finds is impressive. Lionfish really are gorging themselves to death. Because they're eating so much, they're developing a fatty liver disease, which is what all of this is. It's not the same as in humans, but this, the orangey stuff is a liver. It's not supposed to be that color. All the white stuff is just pure fat deposits. Worse still, their population is exploding. Lionfish have spread uh, in the Atlantic unbelievably fast. Nobody would have predicted they spread really this fast. The average male lionfish can fertilize 30,000 eggs at a time. The female can produce 30 to 40,000 eggs every four days. If you do the fecundity or the egg count measurement for a female lionfish, it's about two million eggs a year. By 2003, lionfish had spread across the entire Caribbean, populating about a million square miles of ocean. In about 10 years, genetic testing has proved that all these lionfish are descended from about eight original fish that were released somewhere in South Florida. When you think the first lionfish was seen off the coast of the Bahamas in about 2004, and now it's one of the most dominant fish on the reef down there, I mean, that's staggering how fast they've, they've sort of populated the east coast of the states and the Caribbean. And I've been two trips now to the Bahamas and one to Little Cayman, and I was absolutely blown away at how many lionfish they've got. We were regularly getting, you know, 100 lionfish on a dive. And when you start looking at those numbers of a fish that's not even supposed to be there, there is a problem. That's a real problem. The problem is growing so fast that scientists have no idea where the damage will end. The lionfish is a truly remarkable creature. At only about 18 inches maximum size, it is nonetheless considered to be an apex predator. Still, the lionfish seems to be an unlikely apex predator. A small lionfish is not going to go up and eat a big grouper, but a small lionfish will eat the same things that a big grouper wants to eat. And they are not fast swimmers. Their big frilly fins and spines create far too much drag. They're not a fast swimmer. They're not a very confident swimmer. Lionfish tend to sort of sit in the rocks, be very still. But these small, slow swimmers easily push around large, aggressive grouper. And then by also populating the holes and stuff that a grouper wants to hide out in, the lionfish will displace them. James Morris of the United States National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration tried an experiment using lionfish, grouper, and pinfish. In this tank are two large grouper. A pinfish is released into the tank. The two grouper instantly chase the pinfish and swiftly consume it. Next, a juvenile lionfish is added. The grouper are interested, but then become very leery. The tiny lionfish drifts on the current, calm and unafraid. Then he forces both grouper to back off. They can do this because lionfish are venomous, and their venom packs a hefty punch. Eighteen venomous spines protect their bodies, and no predatory fish seems to have the courage to attack them. Corey Eddy explains why. The venom gland is actually on the trailing edge. It's, it's T-shaped, and there's a small groove on the back. When the flesh, when the spine enters your skin, this flesh is torn down, and it shreds the venom gland, and that's what releases the toxin. I've been stung about nine times, and you know, you learn swear words you didn't know existed, and your reflexes actually get a little faster because you don't get stuck as hard the next time. Equally surprising is what happens when the lionfish becomes the hunter instead of the hunted. Lionfish are very, very unique hunters. They've been designed to, to, to basically do really good at what they do. The lionfish survival strategy uses very little energy for hunting. Instead, they rely on camouflage. Their fins they actually use more as defense with the spines and the venom, and also as sort of the, the cloak when they go to do their, their, their hunting. 
I've actually got a really good picture of some, curl, uh, some reef fish in the foreground and behind them are some sea rods. But look behind the sea rods. Lionfish have remarkably good camouflage. Imagine a lionfish looking head on with the stripes and all that. It looks just like all the things that our little fish like to hide around here. Atlantic reef fish just don't seem to recognize lionfish as predators. Watch as this lionfish held in captivity at the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences hunts down unwary fry. The fry are faster and more agile than the lionfish. But this natural advantage makes no difference at all if they fail to recognize the lionfish as a predator. The lionfish creeps closer and closer. The fry should swim to the other side of the tank, but they don't. Then, with lightning speed, the lionfish swallows the fry. Within a few minutes, no fry are left in the tank. With these yellow grunts, the scenario just repeats itself. These grunts watched the lionfish eat all the fry. They should be terrified, but they swim right up to the lionfish, handing him his dinner on a silver platter. And that is how lionfish are swiftly wiping out entire populations of juvenile reef fish all over the Caribbean. You'll see sometimes, you know, a 14-inch lionfish with 21 uh, white grunts. I think the most that um, Ocean Support Foundation has found is something like 32 juvenile fish inside the stomach of these guys. We're concerned about a number of different impacts of lionfish. One is the impact on the structure and function and biomass of native reef fishes, but we are also concerned about specific uh, ecologically important species like cleaner fishes that, that help to keep the parasites down on native fishes, like herbivorous fishes, fishes that are important for keeping the algae in check on the coral reef. We know lionfish are eating those fish. That means lionfish are not just a threat to other fish, they're a threat to the coral reefs themselves, but they are also damaging the economy. We know they're eating economically important species, even species that we have pretty aggressive stock rebuilding plans for, like grouper and snapper. Um, so we're concerned about, about all those impacts. We never meant to cause any harm, but with lionfish, we humans have opened Pandora's box. And like Pandora, we will never undo our mistake. If we had one or two fish, lionfish, out there in the Atlantic, there's a possibility we could eradicate them. But just the sheer numbers and how fast they're spawning, um, there is no way we're going to be able to stop them forever. In other words, lionfish are here to stay. All we can really do is bring their numbers under control. When you're finding fish in about a thousand feet of water, we can't dive those depths. We can't target those fish. So those fish are still down there breeding. They're still down there eating. So to think that we're going to actually eradicate them, it's not going to happen. This is a management issue now. And this is going to be a forever problem that we'll be dealing with. Marine biologists Tim Noyes and Caitlin Baird of the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences are two of the many people answering the challenge. Today we're off hunting lionfish as part of the 2012 lionfish tournament. And then hopefully we'll get to eat them to beat them. Eat them to beat them. That is the motto of Bermuda's annual lionfish tournament, the first tournament of its kind and the inspiration for many similar tournaments in the US and the Caribbean. 18 inches, guys. That's huge. So for the 18-inch fish, fly your goslings up. The idea is pole spear with the elastic, fire it into the fish, and then because these are spread out, they stop the fish when it's on like so. They stop it from being able to wiggle off. Tim Noyes has a passion for skewering lionfish. Lucky for him, skewering lionfish is as easy as shooting rats in a barrel. When you see them, they don't tend to flee 
in comparison to trying to spear snapper or grouper or things, they're a lot easier. To make things easier still, lionfish are the only fish that you can legally spear wearing scuba gear in Bermuda. And you can spear them all year round. You just need to get a permit. Then you're ready to go hunting anywhere in Bermuda's waters. A really good time to be looking for lionfish is first thing in the morning and, and in the evenings, those two dust times where they've got the advantage over their prey. That's when they tend to come out of the rocks and hunt. During the heat of the day, they tend to be up underneath ledges or up in a hole somewhere. We humans must hunt lionfish because no other species will. Also, we humans are the only predators that can avoid their spines, especially when we use a scuba tank and a spear. Eric spotted him in a cave full of glassy sweepers from one side, so I went in the other side and then I guess he was curious as to what I was because he slowly came out, so he got the rough end of the spear. <laughs> now it's dinner time, so let's give the lionfish sign. Lionfish nil, us one. It's a start. <laughs> Because the annual Eat 'em to Beat 'em tournament is in Bermuda, it means that, well, it means it ends up being a big party. And I guess we already know that means there's plenty to drink. So, what's on the menu? Believe it or not, lionfish. I loved it. it. I thought it tasted really good. It just tastes like any white fish, it doesn't have a strong taste at all. Chris Malpas was the chef. He made fish cakes. Once you've removed the, the spines and so forth that are are gonna cause any harm. Uh, you can handle it just like any other reef fish. Uh, basically fillet it over the top of the rib cage and then you've got two nice white flesh fillets. But before you eat them to beat them, you have to clean them. And they are covered in venomous spines. Not a problem, as marine biologist Corey Eddy explains. So what we're doing, the first thing we do is we have to cut all the spines off just for safe handling. It's not 100% necessary, it just makes things a little bit easier. Lionfish spines have a fearsome reputation, but removing them is easy to do safely. Just remember, the venom is only found on the tips of the fins. The venom gland is actually on the trailing edge. It's, it's T-shaped and there's a small groove on the back. So, just cut off the ends of the fins. It's really simple. You just get a good pair of scissors, as Mike's doing right now. You just chop them right off. It's, it's really no problem at all. It, it, people are more scared of them than they need to be. It's really easy to handle. Even You don't even have to cut the spines off. You can just go right at it. Once the fins are removed, you just fillet the fish in the usual way. That's awesome. Very good. Very tasty, very white, very sweet, very delicate. The meat itself is just like sort of hogfish, snapper, and hind. I mean, it's very palatable meat. So how fast did people eat the fish cakes? It didn't take long. We did about 275 for today, and I think uh, it took about 20 minutes to get rid of most of them. And getting rid of them through commercial fishing is about the best solution so far for the lionfish invasion. So ask for lionfish at your favorite restaurant. Tell commercial fishermen that you would like to buy some, or head out on your own with a spear. It's a very unique situation. Um, you know, you eat your mistakes, basically. But while we're eating our mistakes, let's also learn from our mistakes. Probably the greatest lesson we need to learn from this invasion is how lionfish was introduced. And to make sure that the public understands the impacts of non-native species when they're introduced into a new, into a new area. Um, we have to really understand the role of prevention and early detection and removal of those non-native species as soon as they're detected, but more importantly to prevent them from being introduced in the first place.